It's always hard to get vintage deck names correct. This deck today is a great example of why we can't call Countervine Squeevine. All right, welcome back, vintage gamers, to what I consider a perfect example to the to answer the question, Justin, why don't you call Countervine Squeevine? For those of you who don't know, for a while, all versions of Hollow One Vengevine were called Hollow Vine, uh, which really didn't serve the community a very strong <laughs> uh, usefulness once the two decks split to a deck that uses lands, typically called Agrovine now, and a deck that uses all counter magic and pitch spells, typically called Countervine. And now people at the time were like, Justin, Justin, why can't we just call um, call Countervine Squeevine? Squeevine is like, squeeze the iconic card inside the deck. It's the offset of the uh, Bizarre Engine and, and so on and so forth. And I said, no, because there's really nothing stopping Agrovine from playing Squeeze. And it might even be correct in certain metagames for Agrovine to play Squeak. So here we actually have a recent uh, challenge finish with, from QQE who had a Agrovine list with Squeeze in the main. Um, the reason you might play something like Squee in the main of your Agrovine list is to provide you uh, with better uses of Bizarre after activation number one. That might be the case when you're playing a bunch more uh, free spells in this version, like four Mind Break Trap, four Force of Vigor. Um, this looks like it trimmed down on Hex Drinkers to fit them in, maybe some other slots. Uh, but pretty straightforward Agrovine shell, except we're going to play some Squeeze and some Mind Break Traps in the main. Could work. Could be pretty sweet. Uh, so I'm going to play that today. I just, like, really wanted... <laughs> I actually think I just really wanted to play a video with this deck just so I could say, hey, this is why we can't call Countervine Squeevine. Um, and it's actually just, like, a, a pretty reasonable example across the board of when I'm looking at making naming conventions for various decks in the format. I have to look at, you know, if we're going to name the deck after a card, is that card always going to be played in the deck? Is that card only going to be played in the deck? Is that card going to be, you know, pushed out of the deck eventually? Is it really a defining factor? Like, you don't really, for the most part, want to name decks around cards. You kind of want to name them around strategies. A lot of times people do name them around cards because it's very, you know, it's iconic. It evokes like, oh, you know, Coveted Jewel Shops. We know exactly what the Coveted Jewel is doing in that deck. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 it's a bit of back and forth. Um, there was another point I wanted to make, but I can't even remember what it was now. Oh, I'm sorry about the light. Don't worry, it doesn't annoy me too much, but, uh, you know, it's only so many hours in a day. Can't let sunlight be stopping me from recording vintage videos for you that will go up on this YouTube channel every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I'll see you in round one. Are you interested in weekly vintage metagame recommendations? Do you want to see your deck list played on my channel? Or maybe you are just looking for the best way to support my vintage content. Make sure you check out the Patreon link in the description below. Let's battle. All right, here we go. Round one of our league with Agravine. Our opponent was playing Oath for a while, but it seems they are on Luris today. They have quite a range, so it makes sense to me. I'm going to unfortunately lose a Hollow One and a Vengevine in this powder, but finding a... Do I need to lose a Hollow One? In this I was going to say finding a Bazaar is important, but one of the nice parts about playing Agrovine in, in comparison to Countervine or Dredge is you don't have to keep a hand that has a Bazaar of Baghdad. Your hand can be creatures, and it can be good. For instance, Hexdrinker, typically very good against Luris shells. Though I guess my opponent could be on uh, Luris Breach. That's been popping up a lot recently. So this hand goes Emerald, Hexdrinker, level up once, untap, maybe level up three times into protection. If it doesn't work out, we can't really cast Vendrine. We can only, like, cycle Hollow One. It's probably not good enough. But something you do need to be thinking about is, is this hand, like, actually capable in terms of non-Bazaar hands? So I think this one's not. So I'm going to powder. Here we've got some Bazaar. This is a nice one. It's got um, Squee and Bazaar. So if they don't wasteland our Bazaar, we can get some advantages here. I like this hand a lot. Preordain Volcanic. Okay, so my opponent is probably on the, the, the new Luris Breach deck. That seems like to be... 
the way people have been trying to play Breach recently. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Some of them have PO, like the Mark Tobias list, and some of them don't. I would assume this one doesn't if it has preordain. So, all right, we're gonna get a nice bazaar, activate Vengevine, Squee, and Rootwalla into the yard. Bring back Vengevine with Hollow One. Seems like a pretty reasonable choice. Man. Mental misstep on my Blazing Root Wallet, sure. How about on this one? I'm just going to hold the Lotus, probably. I don't think you want to, like, cast this Blood Gas. I don't think that's a good use of our Black Lotus. I think I'd rather just have all these cards in hand, and maybe we can do something else next turn. We got the Squee to offset here. They don't have a Wasteland. We have Double Trap, so it's hard for us to, like, die to Breach combo. Ooh, Jeskai colored. Interesting. Okay, so maybe it's just Jeskai, then. Interesting. I was thinking that they would want to be on Breach, but... So if they have, like, a Swords to Plowshares or Dreadhorde Arcanist, it's very strong against these kind of aggro vine lists. Uh, let's go activate. Put Blood Ghast, Blood Ghast, Squee in the yard. Hmm. I think I'd rather just hit this Tundra than... And activate Bazaar again. It's not like I'm drawing into, you know, Force of Will, like a Countervine deck would have. And these Mind Break Traps are going to be a lot worse against, um... The Mind Break Traps are going to be a lot worse against Jeskai than they are against something like Breach. Though, my opponent could still play Breach in their deck, for what it's worth. I think I am going to bring back two Venge uh, Blood Ghasts, both of my Blood Ghasts, and bring the Wasteland and hit this Tundra so I don't get sorted. I mean, I could still get Tundra sorted, obviously, and I lose both of these. I still am almost attacking for lethal, though, so it's not too bad. So far, Squee has been incredible. This card is really, really strong with Bizarre Baghdad, that's for sure. You might ask a question, Justin, why don't aggro vine lists play Squee often? And it's because their deck is not really built to extract value from a Bazaar Bag deck. Their deck is kind of built to use Bazaar once and have that be enough. And then from there, like, build out mana and cast Collector Roofs and, or up to the Hex Shrinkers. It's not really the, the design of the deck to, like, have multiple Bazaar activations. One of the big plus points of this deck compared to the other bizarre decks it is like the least reliant on bizarre being in play being in your opening hand etc etc so oh no why do we have one mismatching soul surgical extraction you hate to see it i do think that you probably want all four squeeze in this kind of matchup uh it's possible that you want a cage for dread horde arcanist or even ley line for dread horde arcanist maybe the best answer is simply just to have dismember though you kind of want to be able to grind here. I don't really feel like these Mind Break Traps are quite good in this matchup. Um, I don't really want to bring in Leyline. Maybe I will bring in a Surgical. Seems like it could be okay. I don't know if that's true. I'm going to try it like this. I don't know if this is the right way to do it, but this is what looks like it would work to me. It's weird. There's a push and pull when you play against these um, Lurus decks. Sometimes the, the, the deck is actually pretty fragile to... Uh, graveyard hate. If you play like um, like one of the big problems with playing Luris Breach in the past was that if you boarded in Leyline, you shut down the Luris engine and the Breach engine, and then they had to win some other way. Typically, historically, you would use like a Sprite Dragon, uh, but nowadays you mostly just use Urza Saga. Um, so like there have been times where Leyline is actually pretty good, like especially if you if your deck has Dreadhorde Arcanist and Breach and Luris, hitting all four all three of those with Leylines really hampers the ability for the deck to win. However, like if you still like just do like the normal, you know, ancestral draw and multiple swords, like that can also just win. So and we don't want to like hurt our decks function out, uh, you know, capabilities too too much by bringing in too much removal. But Dismember answers Lurus and Dreadhorde, so I think it's pretty reasonable. And then we need one more slot, and I think a Surgical has, like, a little bit more game than a Mind Break Trap. And I think probably better than a Cage. 
Don't know about that for sure, though. It's not like we have a saga to search up our cage or anything, so. Here we go into game number two. I've got a beautiful hand again. Squeeze looking great. Okay, monkey. Monkey is a card I highly discourage people from playing in vintage. And the reason is it's so bad. <laughs> You'd think, you know, people have, have like a, oh man, monkey, monkey's so good. Monkey's so good. Monkey is really, really bad. Uh, and basking Rootwalla and blazing Rootwalla are definitely one of the reasons that's the case. So I think here I'd like to just get max value off of my uh, squeeze. So I'm just going to pitch the Rootwalla to block the monkey. Not that the monkey hitting would even be that good. Um... But I'm just going to get multiple squeeze in the yard in case my bazaar sticks around. And then I was thinking about trying to get a challenge on one, but I don't even really think that's that good. So I'll just play a challenge on zero. Turns off like Bobble and Luris, uh, Lotus loops and that kind of thing. We've got a mental misstep in case they like swords or bolt our root wallet to try to get their monkey in, which is kind of nice. Uh, they did have a, a a wasteland for our bazaar this time though, so the game is going to be a lot harder. Now we have now here's like another thing is we have a bunch of dead squeeze. I don't even know if we have red mana in our deck to pass. That's a good draw though. Get another one one in here. I thought there was a Gaia's cradle for a second, but it's not. It's a Yavamaya cradle of growth. Just going to mental mist up this brainstorm. I feel like my opponent is like out of resources, and I want to use this opportunity to push through our land drop is obviously our best draw any land drop actually should be fine then we get more creatures in play guy's cradle is a great draw guy's cradle might be the best draw in our deck actually strip mine all right, well, in this case, I think it's slightly better to just deploy more creatures rather than up this Hex Shrinker right away. Um, if my opponent doesn't have anything, then it's better to up the Hex Shrinker right away and make sure you can get it on the next turn. But I think this is a better use of our mana, deploys the, the Ragavan, and then if they don't have a thing for the Hex Shrinker, we can, if we draw a land, we can just do it all in one turn. So they had a sword, so I'm glad that we didn't invest any mana into that. We have a Hut Collector Roof. Um, we're not really, like, super far ahead in this game. If my opponent draws an Ancestral, they're probably winning, but... Mm, that's a good one. It's like an ancestral. Very hard to cast, but uh, when you do cast it, it is a powerful card. Found a card they want. Found a land they want. Things are rough. One wasteland on a bazaar, and it all, all comes crashing down. It's not like our deck has Noxious Revivals. Oh, so it's the Questing Luris deck. Sweet. I like this deck. It's cool. I'm not sure it's great, unless your name is uh, Unlucky Monkey, but... Certainly are going to outdraw me here with no bizarre. Yeah, but maybe our deck should have not. Uh, maybe our deck should have. Um, maybe our deck should have uh, noxious revivals. Like so our deck doesn't have noxious revival because that's just like not how it's built. So you kind of see the little bit of clash of styles of adding squee to your deck when your deck isn't really built to to do the thing. I'm just taking a quick look at what the unlucky monkey list plays for graveyard hate. It's it's just tormod. It's just tormod scripts and a bunch of removal. Man, I, I'm always surprised when I look at these lists from Tomas. Okay. I should have boarded out bigger then. I, I think most of the time, these kind of decks bring in some different kind of hate, like needles or something, but like doesn't seem like that's the case. So, uh, Yeah. I mean, I would probably trade this oof to like not let Ragavan hit. I don't know. I'm like not really advancing this board. These Vickers need to come out though. So maybe I do bring in Leila. The problem is this deck is like no longer there's only one Dreadhorde Arcanist in this deck. Oh, there's Renin Six in this deck now. That's sick. Oh, I'll show you guys this the the list. This is the most recent unlucky monkey questing Luris list. Three Ragavan, one Dreadhorde, four questing druid, two Renin Six. 
four preordained, three swords, two expressive iterations, six forces, three baubles, five wastelands, and then like a bunch of removal on the board. Very cool, actually. I'm sure this list goes like way over the top of Luris Saga and like really crushes it, right? That would be my guess. Oh, there's also like Delve spells adding on to the whole Leyline thing. So I kind of thought there were more Dreadlord Arcanists and then there actually are. So we'll have to see what we want to do post board here. I think we are very dead in this game though. We didn't have a very powerful start. I mean, we had a powerful start. They just had the right answer. Plateau gaming, huh? And Red and Six, but no Wasteland at the moment. Oh, they can ping my Root Walla though. Very nice. Uh, be bizarre. Oh, asking you shall receive, I guess. All right, squeeze and venge right into the yard. I'm gonna hold the root wall so I can possibly get the squee back. Do I want to attack this Ren and Six, giving them a monkey hit? Yeah, I think so. Okay, that kind of makes sense. I don't think Wastelanding them does anything, considering there's a Run and Six in play. Ah, they drew a Strip Mine. So now they have Strip Mine Lock, which means things are bad. Though, if we draw a... Um... A creature that we can cast, we can bring back the Venge Vine and kill this Run and Six. And the, uh, all right, cool. Never mind. We're out of here. All right, this game would probably go on for another 20 turns, but uh, I won't let you suffer through that with me. So... Oh, nice. The, the light went away. Okay, so I think these biggers are actually bad now that I've seen my opponent's list. However, the cards that I have to bring in are not quite good either. I guess Needle and Surgical Extraction are the best we have going for us. We can just try to, like, get them somehow. I don't know. I don't really feel like any of these other choices are that good for us, so. What an interesting list. So they do have eight forces post board against other decks. They have Pyroblast, Fragmentized, Flame Slash, Lightning Bolt, Ending, Swords, Wear Tear. Inter so interesting. I just think this list looks really good against like Lurus Saga. I feel like it would just crush it. Uh, this doesn't look powerful enough. I'm gonna mulligan this hand. Yeah, this is much better. This, hand's, this hand is quite good. Put this dismember away and. Like, the way I win this match is just, like, having an overwhelmingly broken start, so... Oh, I actually thought that one of these was a Root Walla. That actually makes it a little harder. So if we draw a Root Walla or a Hollow one, we're probably just winning the game on the spot, because my opponent's answers are just not that strong. Like, they have swords, I guess, which is pretty good. So they have, like, multiple swords. But, like, they're not playing Tabernacle... They're not playing um, balance. They're not playing like big, huge answers to a broken start. So, all right, let's see what this bizarre activates and finds. That was actually not great. Wow. I'm gonna put both of the squeeze in the yard, and um, I'm gonna hold this hex shrinker emerald because I really need to be able to. Put two creatures into play at the same time. Ah, they have the strip mine. Four cards in hand. All right, well. That was uh, not a great activation. Don't have Noctis Revival to bring that back. So we're actually kind of in a, a tough spot. Um, all right, I think I have to lose my dream of Venge Vining here. And um, all right, just give them the ability to counter and just try to go in on this Hex Drinker. If they don't have like a removal spell right away, I can level this up next turn. It's gonna be pretty hard for them to beat, so. Well, that looks bad for us. Plateau Gaming, Swords to Plowshares, all right. I'm going to keep them off mana, I think. Though that's not a blue land, which is a little unfortunate. But, like, I can't cast my spells. I guess, theoretically, if I drew a Yavamaya after, I could maybe cast Vendrine. I just felt like it might be better to... Maybe the Plateau is not worth hitting. 
I'm probably going to waste on this if I don't draw anything worthwhile, though. Like, my opponent has two, three cards in hand after this plateau. They went bottom, bottom. Yeah, it's going to get wastelanded. Red Root Walla. Can't even cast, like, any of my red spells. Because there's just no red lands in the deck. Kind of an interesting match, though. Oh, they had second Tropical. No second Preordain. Surgical Extraction. Do I want to surgically extract swords or preordain? How many preordains are in this deck? Four. I think I might just hit preordain right now. Normally you hit swords, but like preordain is the way my opponent wins this game. Questing Druid, another land. Wear tear. Oh, there's a Lavinia in the deck now. So he made some changes. Hmm. Tormod's Crypt. Yeah, I'd probably bring in Tormod's Crypt if I saw this squeeze. Uh, so they can't cast the Seek the Beast because they don't have a red land. Wear Terror. Druid. Tundra. Druid Tormod's Crypt. I mean, if they get to Lurus, then things are bad. They're just going to cast Questing Druid because they can't cast Seek the Beast. Sure, that's fine. Oh, they're going to cast Where? They can't cast Where because they don't have red mana as well. <laughs> Man, the mana base of this deck is something that I would make, huh? All right, draw a Black Lotus, maybe. Not a Black Lotus. Black Lotus or a Bizarre Baghdad or a Gaia's Cradle does not exactly do it. Mm, yeah. I mean, if they draw a land, any land, it's bad. Especially a red land. Because now they can wear tear this emerald or buy Luris or anything. I think we're going to lose this game. Quite unfortunate. Oh, I just got answered by one wasteland. And my deck doesn't have any real way to deal with that. So. Yeah. That's a red spell. Killing my emerald. Attack for two. And then they can buy Luris. And they can, like, loop. More mod scripts, I guess. Yavamaya. Not a bad draw, all things considered, but still doesn't actually do anything for me. They can't cast this Luris until they find another white land. Uh, there is no more Tundras in their deck. There's one plateau. Oh, wait, they don't have another white land. So they have to draw Renin 6. <laughs> There's two Volcanics, one Tundra, two Tropicals, and one Plateau. I've drawn all my squeeze again. I mean, this game's probably... Well, I guess they have a Tormod script. Uh, I was going to say, it's probably pretty good if I get a Bazaar, but... I am dying to a Grizzly Bear at the moment. Yeah, the minute they hit a Ren and Six, that's when we can concede, but... Collector Oof. I would have been able to cast that if I still had my land and my opponent had not drawn Wasteland for turn. Oh. I don't think they have another white source, so we don't have to worry about that, which is nice. So hitting the plateau did end up being okay. Double root walla. All right, so what I can do now is I can pitch this squeed at hand size, which will come back next turn, and then I'll have nine cards, and I can pitch both root wallas to hand size and then bring back Vengevine, which is not a play you do very often, but it's a play that comes up in Countervine from time to time. Or I can just draw the bazaar, and now we have to do various other things. So we're going to have to make them use their Tormod script here. I'm thinking we just go one vine, two root wallas. We lose two vines. Maybe I should have done one squee. I don't know. Making them get two vines. Yeah, I guess maybe it's better to do like one squee, one vine in the yard, and make them hit this for one vine. This does give them a pretty good Tormod script, but I wanted to make sure they use the Tormod script. Like, if they don't use the Tormod script, it's bad. And it's still good for us to have access to all of our... Um, it's going to be good for us to have access to all of our squeeze if my, we don't get wastelanded again, right? So now we have two creatures in play. We can actually play this Collector Oof for whatever that's worth. All right. So the game is back on. We drew the Blizzard. 
And if they don't have a wasteland, we have triple squee, so we'll have a we'll have an incredible draw engine of an extra two free cards every turn. We do have another Vendrine in the in the back as well. Looks like they don't have it. Oh, they have another Tormod's Crypt, but it can't be activated because of Collector Oof. Ah, okay. So I definitely should have gone one Squee, one Vengevine in the yard, get the Tormod's Grip, keeping two Vengevines. I think that would have been better. That's my fault. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, I didn't really even consider the fact that... All right, so I can't actually bring this Vengevine back this turn, but I can cast it. So I can go uh, Squee, Squee, Rootwalla, cast Rootwalla... Is that better? Yeah, it's probably better. Squee, squee, root walleye. This holds two squeeze. Oh, I guess they can't activate it. And then I can use this to cast Vengevine. Oh, I should hit this Tundra so they can like never cast Lurus, huh? Seems like that'll be pretty good. They can still cast Tropical uh, Renin 6, I guess, but we should be able to kill Renin 6 pretty fast. This keeps them off of, like, immediate Luris. What do they draw? Time Walk. Okay. This Quest of Druid is going to be too large in, at some point as well. Did they keep in Forces? I didn't look. Let me look. Uh, where's my Stepping Tool? They, cut, they did keep in forces. Interesting. Oh, they're off it. GG's. All right. Weird, weird match. Weird match. I don't think I played super well, but played well enough. Um, Squeeze, a very powerful card. Bazaar is obviously a great draw at all points in every game. So that's not, that's not a true statement, Justin. Why you say it like that? All right. Back at it again. Round two. Uh, no Bazaar. No way to cast spells. Let's mulligan. No bizarre, no way to cast spells. Let's mulligan. This is a classic hand right here. Two Prime Bay Trap, two Hollow One, two Gaius Cradle, and one Rutwala. Uh, da, na, 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 na. All right, I don't know where our opponent is. I'll be back. All right, we're back. Mulligan. And keep, for sure. Um, Powder away and one of the cradles away. I'm going to keep double bizarre in case we get wastelanded. It's kind of our only protection against wasteland when we don't have um, Noxious in our deck. Uh, but it's not, it's not exactly the case because... Uh, You know, our deck is like kind of built to be able to play without bazaar. That's the kind of your protection for your bazaar. All right, so we found a squee off of our activation. That'll get start giving us some card advantage. I decided to keep the cradle over the Abamaya because I already have a root walla. Uh, maybe that's not worth it. We'll have to see. Don't know what our opponent's going to be up to here. Underground C. Pearl Ponder. Okay. Hmm. I can't remember. Is this the opponent that does a lot of crazy stuff? I feel like it is. They went Shuffle. Emerald. Needle. Oh. Brutal. Quite brutal. I feel like I have to save my Wasteland for a Saga. Like, if they have a main deck Needle, they have to have a Saga in their deck, right? All right. Well, I have uh, two Root Wallas and the ability to pump a Root Walla, which is not a insubstantial clock. It's four damage a turn. It's like a hollow one. <laughs> I have a Wasteland if they do go Saga Gaming. Um, but, I mean, I'm not really stopping them from doing anything else, and they have a lot of jewelry, so things are a little rough on that end. Hex Shrinker's a draw, though. I 
Um, like if they have a hole breacher, that's fine. Okay, they did have a hole breacher. I'm not gonna pump because I'm gonna play this hex shrinker. I lost out on a mana this way. It's possible I was sh so I considered just attacking with Rootwalla to play around Hold Breacher, but I, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right to do that. But maybe it's correct because of the mana difference. Like I'm still gonna be able to make this Hex Shrinker pro instance next turn. So Badlands. So there's Grace's Saga, I guess. Narsa. Badlands in the Narset deck. They found Demonic Tutor. Badlands in the Narset deck. You got me. <laughs> okay. They have a removal spell. They might want to use it on this Hex Shrinker here. Or maybe they just tutor for Time Twister. It's going to be pretty hard for us to beat Time Twister. Let's be honest here. Grixis Saga. Main deck Needle Hold Breacher. Does not sound like a great matchup for our Bizarre Baghdad deck. Thought I had a pretty reasonable opener too. Considering the Mulligans. But... If I hadn't attacked with the red root walla, would it change anything really? Not really. Looks like they're just gonna get Twister. I can't actually kill the whole Breacher, so I'm not really beating it. So I guess we just pump this twice and be sad about life. Don't think attacking the Narset particularly helps us, but I don't really want them to have access to a Narset activation either, so. Uh, don't think we're winning this one. Believe we're getting twistered here. Yep. A wheel. Wheel is a lot better for us than Twister. Kind of don't know why my opponent would go Twister over Wheel. Or sorry, Wheel over Twister. Is there a good reason? Oh, it's because they're a Breach deck, apparently. Because they put Brain Freeze in their yard. So now if they draw a... Uh, um, a, an Underworld Breach, they can win. There's a possibility they drew five lands and lose, I guess. So we should play to that out. Uh, I get to return this, sure. So, how many activations here? Four, which will put me to pro everything. It's got to be the best. Uh, Pro everything should be just better than getting a, a Saga token, right? Or better than killing the Saga. Next turn, we can kill the Saga. Leave these Root Wallas back. I guess, theoretically, they can have Time Walk here, and that would make my day really bad. But I feel like just swing for the fences here is the best. I mean, it kind of looks like they drew nothing. So maybe we can just win with two attacks. It's kind of sick. It's kind of sweet, huh? Well, we'll see if this not killing the Saga token comes back and bites me. It is like a 2020, right? 14, 14. Uh, I can't cast a Squee every turn. I really wish this deck had like a convenient way to make red mana. I mean, they're going to have to draw something right now to win this game, which is quite the outing. Uh, oh, we casting force, I assume. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just going to pump this to 10 counters. I don't know why. Just seems like a good use of my mana, right? I guess I could have pumped my root wall up for a sec. All right. Well, see what happens. They don't have something, they die. Normally, I can see do a Wheel of Fortune, but... My opponent probably should have still cast Twister, right? They, they put a root wall into play off that. Wow, we won this game. That is illegal. That is a completely illegal. How did that happen? 
All right. Uh, well, we're going to have to bring in Dismember. And we're going to have to bring in Basiju and Cage. And then we do want Traps and Vigors in this matchup. It doesn't really feel like a Blood Gas matchup. I do feel like Squee is actually good in this matchup because we're going to be doing more things with our cards. I actually think I'm going to take out the Hex Shrinker, even though it was quite good there. I think this is just like a different style of matchup than the, our previous ones, where like we actually want all of our weird artifact removal. My opponent's not going to wasteland us, so it's actually good to have um, Bizarre plus Squee. So I, I kind of think this is the way we want to go about it. I don't know what my last two cuts are going to be, though. I kind of want all the rest of these cards, so that's kind of challenging. Maybe I trim a powder. Am I allowed to do that? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, let's trim one Yava Maya and one powder. I can get yelled at in the comments if that's a bad idea, but we're going to do that. All right. This hand does not have a bizarre Baghdad in it, nor does it have particularly large amount of interaction this hand loses some powerful cards but we'll powder it let's keep uh green root walla i think is the most powerful card uh let's powder it and we'll keep no interaction in this hand but obviously powerful bizarre hand so All right, so they have turn one Needle. We have turn one Vengevine. <laughs> I don't know if that's what I'm going to do, but it certainly seems like something I might. Oh, we can just Besiege you. The Needle, is that worth? Yeah, it's got to be worth. It's so strong, my God. Or are they going to counter the... They countered the Black Lotus. Wow, they countered the Black Lotus. Smart. Smart. I'll play the wasteland out in case we draw another green land so we can besiege you this. Oh, man, I wish I had Vigor right now. Vigor would be so strong. Oh, God. Red Ruwala. I could play the besiege you and cycle the hollow one. I have no follow up. Strip mine. All right. Well, I will definitely strip mine your basic island. That leaves you with not very many things to do in life. All right. Follow one. Eh, I think I'm going to wait. I have like pretty good pitch to hand size cards and my hollow ones become very good if my bazaar gets activated. So shit, do they have Tomonic too? Sure hope not. It's really the only black spell in their deck though, right? Oh, they do have Demonic. <laughs> God, why? No. You get a Tolarian, but I'll kill it immediately. I don't know what they're going to get. Um, all right, so they went for Talarian, so they could do what? Merchant or Ancestral? Interesting. I mean, I'm going to have to wasteland this academy. That's pretty much guaranteed. Ugh, they hit Sapphire. They hit Double Needle. Oh, I should have wastelanded. <laughs> My bad. Uh, I just clicked through it. I didn't think about them needling wasteland. Um, it's fine. I didn't really know if this Tillerian Cattery actually, actually matters now that they have Sapphire, right? I guess if I draw like a Collector Roof, it matters. But then I can't feel, wouldn't be able to cast it anyways. So. 
All right, well, I will put this into play, and then if I pitch my root wall at a hand size, I'll make green mana again. I don't know. This game is, like, super lost. <sighs> Could have wastelanded. Probably should have wastelanded, realistically. Key. Pass. All right, well, the wasteland would have been useless if they don't have anything. Benchmine. All right. Well, we're not. We're almost there. <laughs> we're almost there. If I, once my, if I pass another full turn here. Oh, okay. We die. If I pass another full turn there, I pitch my root wall at a hand size. It gives me a Gaia's Cradle green mana when I, I can use to besage you the needle. And the thing and things happen. So the Tolarian character didn't actually matter there. Interesting. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with the same stuff. That game was very, very winnable, but we didn't really hit the right cards to win it, so. Uh, not this hand. This hand, for sure. This hand. Triple Root Walla. I'm going to just get rid of one of the Root Wallas, because we already have three cards to pitch to Bazaar. And I want to keep extra green cards and stuff, so... Oh, I definitely want to pitch Squee, Red Root Walla, but I think I'm going to hold the other one just so I can maybe pitch it to pitch Root Walla to Vigor, and then I can play my my Collector Roof against my opponent's deck. Mental misstep on my Red Root Walla, sure. All right, we just kind of don't want to get too bullied here. Let's see what happens. Like a whole breacher is really bad for us, right? All right, that's not bad. Talarian. Brainstorm. This is a world where you're supposed to vigor in response to the brainstorm, but I kind of think seeing like more stuff is better. Like if they go in on a needle here, we can go and kill the needle in the pearl. I end stuff. Seemed like needle has been one of their spells that matters. Oh, let the blue mana fade away. I'm still gonna vigor here. Um, it's just gonna limit them by a lot of things, so. We, we have a squee to recover, so. I guess I had a wasteland, so maybe it wasn't necessary, but. Uh, root wall up. Yeah, maybe with the wasteland, it's not worth it. But I kind of wanted to, like, use it as a force of will bait as well. I'm not sure. Tabernacle. Okay. Root wall it down. But the thing is, like, the squee is maximum overperforming right now. This is, like, the exact kind of spot where you would want to have a squee. Instead of, like, being, you know, depleted of resources, I have a squee, so everything is great. <laughs> squee is so strong. Pretty nice performance so far from the, the Goblin Nabob. All right. Root wall has been vanquished by the power of Tabernacles. Not particularly worried about a tabernacle. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just do this. I mean, those two cards have to go in my yard no matter what. I'm going to just play out of a you Might pay for my root walla. Might just let it die and have a green mana. Obviously, it puts me further from bringing the Vengevine back, but I want to bring the Vengevine back on an empty board anyways, so... I think the answer to this question is pay at least once. Like, if I get a Gaia's Cradle as well, that'd be pretty nice. Vengevine again. Double Vengevine Squee. Play a Wasteland. Well, I am currently just, like, outdrawing my opponent with the power of uh, Bazaar of Baghdad here, because they got no mana. They have no mana because we disrupted their mana with Vigor, so they can't like play a whole breach or anything. They're gonna go Vamp here. 
I will snap the wasteland their their delta if they vamp for an ancestral here. They still have an island in their deck they can fetch as well. They found a saga. Alright, I'm just gonna wasteland the saga. I don't really care about the other stuff that's happening at the moment. Also, like, if I just bring these Vengeance back for two turns, like, for a turn, and then whatever, then drop. Uh, I think I'm, like, I think I'm supposed to keep this Root Wall in play because of Gaia's Cradle, so. Chalice on zero. Seems pretty good. Hollow one. Weird. Kind of want all three of these cards, actually. I'm going to let these go. Pretty just far from casting Oof and the Seiju. I feel like this Chalice, Mental Misstep, and Hollow One combination is just a lot stronger. Obviously, this makes it harder for me to bring my Vengevines back again, but I think that's okay because we're going to put a Hollow One in play. All right, now the question is did they have a Vamp? Looks like they do. I think we let the Vamp result. Yeah, we have to, we can let the vamp resolve now because they can't get black lotus because of chalice. So they're just gonna go for ancestral. Yeah, I think like what else can they really realistically get here besides ancestral, right? I guess they could theoretically get mental misstep, which or sorry, uh, uh soul ring, which we have covered, but mental misstep. I think we're actually like this is really good. Like I, I can't think of another card they can get. I guess they can get a Saga. But we have a... Oh, maybe they get, like, a Strip Mine or something. A Needle. I mean, this Mental Misstep covers so much. That's the reason that I kept the Mental Misstep in my hand. I also, like, kind of knew my opponent had a Vampiric based on how they played the last turn. And they were just, like, very hesitant to crack end of turn against my active Wasteland. Because they would have to get a Black Source. So, it's just like, I just knew they had a Vampiric based on how they played the match. Because they like they had a vampiric, but it, I could wasteland it, so they chose not to vampiric. Like they paused at my end step, chose not to vampiric, and so I know they have a vampiric, so I can just keep hollow one chalice ancestral, which covers all my bases. And ah, oh. because like there's worlds if I don't have chalice where I have to counter vampiric because they could get like black lotus and twister or something, right? And then it's really bad. Uh, I'd like to see, wish I could see why I would draw here, but I like how we played this game. All right, on to round three. Too bad of a start. My opponent looks like they're revealing a Luris. Um, what do we have? We've got interaction, interaction, squee with no bizarre. So we're powdering away one Vengevine. All right, guess we're powdering. No, well, this hand also doesn't cast spells. So, I mean, it kind of cast spells, actually. Theoretically, I can go, like, turn two, oof. Ah, it's just not good. Mulligan. All right, here we go. That's a good one. Not a bad six. Drop our powder. We've got Squee, Hollow One, Blood Gas. Bring it back with Cradle, Cast Oof. I like that. Opponent is on Luris. All right, let's uh, keep this one and Mulligan this powder and hit done. All right, what did my opponent keep? Opponent kept a six card hand as well. All right, Bizarre, activate, uh, Squee, Bloodgast, Rootwalla. This is a great start. Even have a little form of interaction. Not that I don't. Not that I know how good Mindbreak Trap will be against my opponent's deck, considering they're a Lura stack. But Crazy Diamond is a bit of a brewer. Might have something special for us up his sleeves. Or, you know, might just be normal Luris stuff. We'll see. Lots of Luris running around in Vintage right now. Lots of different Luris. Because we got Luris Saga in form of blue-white 
blue black or esper you've got luris breach you've got luris jeskai lots of different luris decks right now I, I, i'm actually like something i've been thinking about recently maybe i'll make a voice of vintage episode about it um how was luris like post nerf luris was it misevaluated and not played enough or was it truly that we needed Lorien revealed to like make Luris as good as it is? Like it, it almost feels like to me that maybe Luris like was not being played enough before Lorien revealed, and now it's all like coming to the forefront. But like you don't want to discount the impact Lorien revealed had, and it clearly helped those decks, right? So I don't know the answer to the question. I'm just Ah, oh, second spell Lavinia off of Black Lotus on turn one. Very nice. I think we might have enough things in play where that doesn't matter anymore, but... And Dress Down. Sure. Hope they play another spell. <laughs> then I can trap him. Uh, Alright, well... No more free things, but I can cast a lot of my stuff now, so... Uh, Squee... Emerald and Trap, I would assume. Play a Cradle, bring back a Bloodgast. Tack with my Hollow One, and then cast a Collector Roof. Not bad. The squeeze looking great again. So far, so good for the QQE innovations here. I can F6 now that my Mind Break Trap is not online. <laughs> Wasteland. All right. Bazaar is down. Took one extra turn to get there. Oh, they hit the Gaia's Cradle. Interesting. I'm glad I held a second Gaia's Cradle then. I'm not 100% sure I know why they held a Gaia or they did that, but. Uh, still going to activate. Pitching. Goblin, Vengevine, Trap. I'm going to hold the Root Wall. I can cast it off this Cradle later and bring back this Vengevine. I'm going to let my opponent block the uh, Root Wall if they want. Get 8 damage in. I'm going to play the Not Cradle Land just because I think it hides some of the power level I have here. I guess, theoretically, if I play the Root Walla out, I actually... I still don't have Lethal Threat, so I don't think that matters. Death Ray Shaman, I fixed their mana? Ah. <laughs> I fixed their mana with a Yavimaya. That's quite funny. Uh, Alright, so hopefully I can bring back my uh, my Vengevine this turn. That'd be pretty strong. This, this Squee has just worked super over time in this game. Looks like I'll be able to bring back two Vengrines. If I get to cast this, it will just get countered, but that's okay. And then I have Lethal Number of Vines. <laughs> the, the, the old Yava Maya fix my opponent's Tundra to cast Deathray Shaman is just... That's some peak vintage, if I had to ask, say. Oh, okay. So my opponent has some good cards. Probably some kind of Bant Luris with Deathrite Shaman Splash. <laughs> Classic vintage again. Um, I kind of expect their opponent to have five Wastelands. Not 100% sure if we actually want to have Squee. It's possible, though. Uh, I don't know if I like would rather have a needle or if I'd rather just have two dismembers. I think I'd just rather have two dismembers and then uh I don't know how good vigor is going to be. It depends on if they're like a saga deck or not. Kind of feels like trap is actually not gonna be very good though. Um so maybe we'll just keep the vigors in to cover our bases and then we'll just take traps out for some extra interaction here. I've liked the the way this deck is lined up so far. Um, this kind of deck is like the deck that should theoretically be good against like different various Luris decks, but might not might just not have the power level needed. Though Hex Shrinker is quite good against those decks typically. Um Yeah. Though recently Bizarre has been having a pretty good weekend. I just did the data for the weekend. Um been doing that even though I'm on a little bit of a socials break. Figured I might as well put the data out anyways. It's good for everybody. And Dredge was the fourth 
most fifth most played deck in Saturday Challenge and the third most played deck in the Sunday Challenge and the best win rate in the Saturday Challenge and the second best win rate in the Sunday Challenge. So really strong weekend for Dredge. I feel like Dredge is like well positioned against um, the metagame. Like these Luris Saga decks don't have Leyline typically, so it ends up being quite hard for them. Looks like Luris Saga had a really rough showing in the big event, the 66 player um, Saturday challenge with only a 48% win rate. And then on the in the Sunday challenge, it did very, very well. Most played and almost a 59% win rate. So probably just a normal total overall weekend for Luris Saga. Yeah, Dredge had a great, um, great Saturday. 64% win rate with four pilots. Not a lot of pilots, though. Is that 5% of the metagame? Is that why it appeared on my sheet? I auto recently automated the Twitter stuff to, to the degree that I could do it realistically. And just making sure everything is, like, good. Yeah, 6% metagame share. I think that's the number. Right now, I have it showing decks that had more than 5% metagame share and decks that had more than 5% metagame share and above 51% win rate. I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, this hand has a bazaar. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to F6. So far, so good here for this, um, this aggro vine league. I've been pretty happy. We've drawn, drawn okay. Played, played medium minus, I would say, but... No one ever came here for the skill of the pilot. <laughs> for what it's worth, I have gotten, I think, a lot better of a Magic player in the last six years since I started streaming. Wouldn't say I'm a good Magic player yet, but maybe one day. I've high standards. Oh, one of the things I have been doing uh, over the uh, little break I've been doing, I've been grinding TFT. I have been playing Team Fight Tactics so much like hundreds of matches. I've been doing like a lot of studying and like trying to actually get better instead of just mindlessly grinding. I'm currently ranked I'm currently ranked uh 805th in NA in North America and it looks like I'm probably right around the grandmaster rank. I don't know if I actually got grandmaster last night or not. Um No, no, I'm now actually 762nd. So my my plan for TFT is I would my next goal is I really would like to um hit challenger. That's the highest rank in TFT. You need to hit like top 250 or something um on the server. That's quite hard to do, but I think I can do it. And then if I can hit that goal, the follow-up goal is I'd like to play in a TFT tournament, like a professional TFT tournament. Those are like the stretch goals here. Hmm. This is a very interesting activation because I'd only have one obvious pitch. I could pitch this Vigor, honestly. I'm going to pitch the Vigor and the Wasteland, and then I'm going to play Black Lotus Chalice on zero, and then a Hollow One. So this is like the classic one Bizarre activation. Um, Aggro draw, aggro vine draw. Like I, I don't have any like squeeze that go in my yard. So I'm like activating this again means I'm like going down to no cards. They're gonna play Lavinia. I'll have to get up to three lands to play. Lav Dismember not very good against Lavinia. Not unplayable versus, versus Lavinia, but like not great against Lavinia because I need to have three lands. Okay, Tropical Island, White. Oh hell yeah! You watch my latest video, you know what's happening here. Okay, so I. uh might have needed to keep that Vigor so that I wouldn't get Phyrexian Dreadnoughted. But I actually can dismember this Proctor with the Dreadnought in the stack, and that will end up being very bad for my opponent. So, uh, Permanence causing Enter the Battlefield triggers. I don't think that matters much for us. Uh, let's activate our Bazaar here. Wow, that is a hell of a draw. Uh... Yeah, I mean, that's, like, the best possibles, right? I hit two creatures that are free, including a Hollow One and a Vengevine. Like, it doesn't actually get better than that. This is a cast. 
Wow. And then I hit for eight, and I have a dismember to beat a dreadnought. I might even go wider than a dreadnought in this game. Like, I have 12 power. Uh, and then I think I just hold the wasteland for a tabernacle. Dreadnought. Have the answer. Dreadnought? Sad Dreadnought. Rest in peace, you Phyrexian Dreadnought, you. Phyrexian Dreadnought, artifact creature type, Phyrexian Dreadnought. Brutal, savage, and I have Tabernacle cover. And can't really lose from here unless they have, like, land balance, I would say. And even then, I'm in a really good spot. Crushed it. All right, 3-0. All right, chat, we're back. Round four of five of this Vintage League, currently 3-0. We got a cat across the table and no Bizarre of Baghdad in our hand, Mulligan. No Bizarre of Baghdad in our hand, Mulligan. They kept their six. Uh, so this one has Hex Drinker. This one I think I'm keeping on five. Not happy about it, but I think like just I can pitch these two cards and I can play a pretty reasonable Hex Drinker Collector Roof Curve out. I don't think this is like great by any means, but I think, ooh, Verdant Catacomb, so maybe it's Luris. Death Rite Shaman, I should say. Draw a hollow one. All right. Got a hex drinker answer. I guess I can't even up it like this turn, anyways, so I don't really need a hex drinker answer. Badlands. Interesting. Lightning Bolt. What is going on? Luris, Badlands, Lightning Bolt, Wasteland? Uh oh. <laughs> I didn't, didn't account for that in my, uh, My plans here. This is some Jund? God, it's bad for me. They play like a Death Rite Shaman, I'm just not dead on the spot, huh? Oh, wait, Dark Ritual? We dark, we, we, we what? We doing what? We're, <laughs> mind twist. Ooh, opponent, I like it. They're, 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 they're cooking over there. <laughs> Okay, I see you, opponent. I see you, Badlands Bayou Dark Ritual Mind Twist. Dothy Voidwalker, yeah, uh-huh. Savage, beautiful. We're in trouble, I'll tell you that much. The minute they, uh, oh, yeah, now they can buy Luris back, though. They have nothing to buy back with Luris, but they do have a Dothy Voidwalker every turn. It's pretty good. Kind of, I mean, they have a wasteland, so I don't, I don't even have a basic in my deck. Uh, things are bad. All right. Well, at the very least, I get to play out a hex drinker. They have a Luris and one on no card, so they can't actually kill this hex drinker, hopefully, though they could theoretically simply just uh, wasteland me and things are bad. All right. I have some good draws now, though. Cradle. I guess just playing Luris brick walls this board and they just attack with the Dothy Voidwalker eight times. Mm, I guess six times, not eight times. Oh, Devonic Tutor. Hello? That's a good one. Black Lotus, Luris, Black Lotus, Wasteland, no, removal spell. Not sure. No wasteland? Strip mine. Alright, well. I am going to just play this collector roof out. Get in there. What are they demonic for? They didn't want to wasteland me. They have a Luris in their hand. They didn't want to do that either. What are they demonic for? 
Guess we'll find out. Oh, Orcish Bowmaster, kill my Hex Drinker. <laughs> yes, very nice. Uh, very nice. Oh, so they were playing around me having a Wasteland, so they kept the Wasteland around. I see. Interesting. Mm, let's see. Well, I don't think I was prepared for Jund Luris. Let's put it that way. My mulligan was not exactly helping me there. I could have gone deeper on the mulligan, but it doesn't seem like that would really make a lot of sense. Him to Turok? Hello? My opponent is wild in right now, I, and I approve. Spiritually, I approve. Theoretically, I approve. No, not even theoretically. Not really theoretically. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's good. It's, what, what I'm trying to say is I approve of the gusto. However, I am doubtful of the power level. Though, one of the things that I keep trying to stress to people is that you can beat Luris Saga, and one of the ways to do it is to like have a better grind deck. And this deck is a better grind deck. Like This deck is going to probably... well. I guess I have to see, I have to see how, like how it deals with Saga itself, but like Voidwalker is so good against Luris Saga, so I could see this deck like just like beating Luris Saga matchup head up heads up. The problem is like when you don't play blue, you don't play Force, and you like play versus the rest of the field. Uh, that's the problem. Like you can maybe you can beat Luris Saga with this deck, but can you really beat other decks? It seems like a good deck against Bazaar, maybe. So maybe the answer is yes. I don't know. 74% uh, of decks in Vintage play uh, Force of Will, and there's a pretty good reason for that. So, uh, All right, so I think Mind Break Trap is a goner here. I don't actually know Vigor is going to be good, but I don't really have a lot of good cards here. Might just do this thing I did last time. Oh, whoa, I need to dismember. I need to dismember. Oh, my God, I need to dismember. I need to dismember. Give me a dismember, please. No, Justin! I forgot I had Dismember in my sideboard. Uh, that was the card I needed to bring in. All right, well. I just, like, didn't see it up in the corner. This is a, this is a rough powder. Holy moly. I'm losing so much. Three, three lizards. I lost half my deck. Doing the way I win this game is having, like, a really broken turn one, though, so. This is not exactly it yet. Uh, okay. So I'm just going to put the two squeeze and the vine in my yard. And then I'm going to play out the black Lotus, but I'm not going to use the black Lotus. I'm definitely not going to play cage until I use my freaking venge vines. <laughs> See what happens here. This opens me up to drawing things like um, if I get like wastelanded, I can go like Rootwalla and play Rootwalla Oof off of this. Hmm. Okay. Well, I get another activation of Bazaar. It looks like they probably have a, a Bowmaster that we should probably play around if we can help it. What I might do is I might wasteland this Verdant Catacombs. Um. And then activate in response. That did not do what I needed it to do. <laughs> uh, shit. Wow. That was a nightmare, huh? Hmm. Well. That was not ideal. God, I didn't bring in Dismember. How are we ever going to beat Bowmaster? I mean, I, I played around this spectacularly. It just did not work out. I don't know if I'm going to draw the card I need next turn, though. Uh, double Moxon, huh? Dark Ritual? Deathrite Shaman. All right, this is kind of my last turn. I guess if I draw a green land, I can play both of these. Oh. Yeah, I mean... Might just have to activate Bizarre. 
and just play through it. I think we're going to take out a collector roof, right? Yeah, they are. Wow. Okay. Well. Hmm. Not having dismember is not good. All right, what do we hit? Root wall, huh? All right, I think I have to activate. Oh my gosh, we did not hit what we wanted to hit. Okay, so I guess I just have to go and cast the blood ghast. Um, I wish I could play a powder here. There's not really a good surgical extraction target, so I guess I'll just play a cage. I don't really have anything that cage just stops besides Vengevine. Maybe, like, if they kill my Vengevines, I wish I had not played cage so I can bring them back, but then they just eat with death right anyways, so... Pretty sure the surgical is just going to target like a something a death right charm targets. I did just give my opponent a green mana with the stupid Yavamaya, so I might just surgical my freaking uh, squeeze here. Just get, keep, stop my opponent from gaining a life, though my opponent could eat in the response. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of these squeeze. I don't think I'm winning on this board, right? Like these death rate shamans are just gonna kill me really badly, and because I don't have any way to stop this, can't really activate bizarre anymore. Lurus into hand. Wasteland. All right, so I think the answer is vines go in. They don't block. This can go here. They eat this. Just vines, they trade and eat. Uh, I think this is just not enough though, right? Kind of needed to draw better on the very first play of this game where I wastelanded in response, I think. Not sure what draw gets me out of this. I guess a Hex Drinker is probably the draw that gets me out of this. I'm just going to get demolished by the power of uh, Death Rite Shaman, right? Yeah, this matchup seems like real rough for us. They just have a lot of really good answers. They hit my Yavamaya. Sure. Yeah. It's just a 3 2 life linker when there's a cage in play. They're at six life. Basic forest, huh? Still another eat in their yard, and there's still four damage of burn in the yard. Strip mine. I think I'm just as po Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I wanted to make it mana with this, but uh uh there's no mana to be made with this anymore. That is not what I meant to do. Alright, I'll concede to that. Uh I think we're losing this game anyways, but yeah, I, I meant to um make a mana. <laughs> Whoops. Um yeah, I think we're just straight lost here. Like, we'll just lose eventually to these death rights. They'll draw out. 
Seems rough. I guess there's a world where we're hard casting this hollow one. One, two, three, four, plus another powder is fine. We can cast this hollow one. Maybe that's enough. I don't know. Tough matchup, though. Rough. All right, here we go. Fifth and final round with our um, fun little aggro vine deck with some squeeze. Sounds great. Bizarre squee. Mind break. Oh, yeah, the mind break's going to look good here. I think I'm okay with cashing in on a mana crypt. It's a pretty high value mind break trap target. Like, if, if I let the mana crypt resolve and my opponent goes um, past the turn PO on my upkeep, I can't do anything, right? It also gives them a blue mana, so. And I have a second mind break trap for uh, <laughs> my opponent's one ring as well. I don't think I'm allowed to wasteland this workshop in the world we currently live in uh, with Urza Saga. So let's just go Bazaar, activate, put away, squee, second Bazaar. They're not going to get rid of my Bazaar, so there's no point. Uh, and one of my wastelands, probably better to play towards a collector roof out than have another wasteland. And then this chalice should be pretty good at stopping maybe the opal from being turned on or the power of PO. So. Actually, really, really excited about the start of this game. Mind Break Trap basically saves... This matchup is really, really bad. Like, super, super horribly bad. Um, so, Mind Break Trap kind of saves the matchup a little bit. Time Vault, nice. Tinka? Time Walk, yeah. Gonna need a Collector Roof in this game, probably. Key, top, no shot. One card left in my opponent's hand. Pass. All right, we need to get a Yavamaya here. Oh. Well, thanks for playing the game, opponent. I appreciate that. Goodbye, good night, and see you next time. Mm, man, my deck just worked on peak capacity in that set. Holy moly. Woo! <laughs> Jesus. Oh, blue mana. Can't cast that. That needs to go away. Don't think I need a Vigor at this point. I think I'm just going to use the Wasteland, get this blue source so they can't cast Ancestral, Chain of Vapor, Odawara, whatever. I have a backup Wasteland. Not that they can actually use... Um... Mm. Actually, they can, because we turned this workshop into a forest, so they can actually like go Saga, Second Land, and make Constructs. So something to keep an eye on. It's the way we lose this game. We do have a nice Faithless Looting every turn with this uh, Squee, though, so... Nice. Bloodgast is some nice little value. I think I'd rather just ditch a cradle. Don't think that's necessary. Get rid of their land now that I have extra wastelands. I have a nice clock now. Four damage a turn after this next turn, and they are off it. Wow. We just systematically dismantled probably our worst possible matchup. That was big. Big game, big game, big game. Um, I guess this matchup calls for more Besiejus. Maybe a Needle. Uh, don't know how we're going to do that. I guess Blood Gas is kind of garbage. Extrinker doesn't seem necessary either. I don't know if like, you're supposed to like go for a Surgical Extraction. That might be like kind of a way to win, to be honest. Uh, let's try Squee, though, because we are going to be using lots of resources. So let's go with this. I'll be interested to hear if QQ has a different plan for this board, but we kind of are main main boarded for this matchup with our uh, our setup. This hand is not great, but I can't imagine mulliganing it. Like we need a green card for a vicar or like a mind break trap in our opener in this one, but I think oh god, are they going uh ancestral off this? Because that would be great. That would be so good. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. I would just Ancestral probably on my own turn there, but I don't think it matters that much. 
triple root walla. Green cards? Green cards. Cool. So I have Vigor up this turn, and then next turn I have uh, Yavamaya play Collector Roof. Big game. I am pretty happy about the start of this game as well. Though, like, the classic Miser mental misstep on the Ancestral Island draw. The Ancestral Island hand from the Jewel is like... <laughs> there's like seven blue sources in their entire deck or something. So it's pretty funny to me whenever this kind of stuff happens. I have an army of Lizard Wizards. Uh... Yep, I will vigor your two things. Boom. Goes the dynamite. You're not allowed to have fun. I am the provider of fun. Mm -hmm. oh, I like Wasteland, too. Let's jam it. I mean, I could do this after attacks, I guess, but... Yep. I'm going to make you have no fun. Love it when they have no fun. Wait, this is kind of been a sick league. If I hadn't gotten destroyed by Jund, <laughs> I would have had a 5 0, huh? Damn. Jund prevents the 5 0. It was not the, the line that I thought would occur in this uh, video, but Jund prevents the 5 0. Wow, so I can actually go uh, Needle on Urza's Saga, which plays around the Ancient Doom draw, and then hit their blue source. <laughs> we just... What the... That was high power, vintage Magic the Gathering, all the right answers at all the right times. What a 4-1. This deck really overperformed, I would say. I think we hit some really high-end variances. Um, so yeah, we just lost only, we only lost to Jund. Jund Deathrite Shaman. With him to Turok and Mind Twist and Dark Ritual, kind of crazy. But that happens sometimes. Vintage, almost a trophy. I can't, can't clickbait you this time, chat. Sorry. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is a really nice example of what Squee does with Bizarre, even in a deck that doesn't have a mono, mono counter spells. I mean, the Mind Break Trap main was bad until the last round, in which case it was unbelievably good, which is always fun. Um, I don't know. Bizarre is Baghdad, still Bizarre Baghdad. It's uh, not 20% of the metagame anymore, only, you know, 10% of the metagame. But, um, yeah, I think worthwhile, worthwhile to pursue and know and how to know how to play bizarre decks. Obviously, there's always little innovations that can probably help. I know there was a actually most recently a, a top eight with um, I wanted to show that one off a top eight recently with an, a, a Hogak list, actually. So Mad Max, who's a prolific Hogak player, has this top eight uh, on Sunday. So two Hogak, uh, two Hex Shrinker, four Blood Gast, two Legolas's Quick Reflexes, which is a pretty sweet one. Uh, split second uh, removal spell, hexproof thing. Got a loam in there. I think this is a deck that loam makes a bunch of sentient, actually. May even more so than like something like Noxious Revival. That's a questing beast. Interesting. But, I don't know. There's always uh, room inside of Bazaar to put up some cool things. So, thanks to QQE for this little 16th place. Or, what was it? 13th place with this uh, mislabeled. <laughs> see? 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 <laughs> mislabeled deck. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Bazaar is still doing cool things in Vintage. Don't let anyone tell you differently. More Vintage content on this YouTube channel every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I'll see you then.